How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video and welcome to Puli City, a very hot Puli City. I'm going back home to Taichung as this is the final leg of my uh, Huandao, my trip around Taiwan that I've done on my scooter, which is really great. I think that's the best way to see Taiwan. You really get to take it in and absorb it, like I've said, I think, in another video. Um, and it kind of got me thinking about Hong Kong, which has been in the news lately. A big reason is because of uh, China's takeover of Hong Kong. Um, it's sad to say, but Hong Kong has officially fallen. I think uh, my good friend Simok put it best when he said that Hong Kong now is essentially Shenzhen extended. Shenzhen is the city that borders Hong Kong uh, on the Chinese side. Um, but now uh, Hong Kong pretty much, the Hong Kongese people pretty much have had all the rights and freedom that they've been able to enjoy for generations now completely stripped and taken away from them. Um, which is really unfortunate because they're going to have to get used to living under Chinese control, not being able to voice their concerns or their opinions or being able to protest or live in the city that they want to live in and make sure that policies that are being enforced serve the rights of the people and the interests of the people. That's all gone now. Hong Kong is just another Chinese city. Um, which is really unfortunate because Hong Kong is a city that I really love. It's a city that I went to quite often. It's a city where I've got a number of friends from. And I really worry about them because, you know, uh, the, the government now has the power to arrest anybody for so much as like a Facebook post, which quite a lot of Hong Kongese people have posted. Uh, if you are friends from Hong Kong, you've probably seen they uh, have been posting pro-democratic things. I mean, that's, that's punishable now, um, which is terrifying. And that serves as a warning to the island of... Hong Kong, I think, which is the point of this video. Taiwanese people, uh, the Taiwan, the island as a whole, have been watching that situation very carefully, um, simply because they understand exactly what the Hong Kongers are going through. And so you'll often see slogans, uh, works of art, you know, stand with Hong Kong, freedom for Hong Kong, um, around the island of Taiwan. The Taiwanese are really trying to stand shoulder to shoulder with the Hong Kongese. Uh, in making sure that their rights and freedoms have been respected, and they haven't. Hong Kong has fallen. And now Taiwan has, um, you know, a really big problem on their hands because I think a lot of people think that the mainland Chinese communists are going to take Taiwan uh, militarily with force, which, you know, is a possibility, although I don't think it's a very likely one because the cost of human life would be catastrophic. Um, it, it would not be, despite, you know, Chinese military numbers, uh, their advantage of being a larger, you know, country, you know, um, it would still be extremely difficult for them to take this island. And that's without even mentioning, you know, uh, American help, which hopefully they get. Um, but what's probably going to happen and what is happening in Hong Kong is a lot of soft power, a lot of policy makings, a lot of forcing pro-Beijing policymakers and government officials into the government. And they sort of force you know, China's will on Hong Kong, on Hong Kongese people. Because again, Chinese people do not care about what Hong Kongese people want. They care about national unity. They care about retaking the land that they lost and the embarrassing uh, defeats that they suffered in history. And that's, you know, really all they care about. And you know, I have Chinese friends and I understand their point of view. Um, in their mind, it's not even a question, in their mind, and you, you'll often see comments uh, under my videos of Chinese people saying that, you know, Taiwan is not a country, it's a part of China. It's not even a question for them. It's not even a debate. Um, I remember speaking to some of my university students when I lived there. Um, you know, I said that I wanted to go to Taiwan because I wanted to get out of the country. And they were like, what are you talking about? Like, it's almost like they don't even know that there's, that Taiwan has, a, you know, democratic freedoms and a standing military and their own currency and their own culture and their own way of doing things. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not... For Chinese people, it's all they care about is national unity. They want these areas that they claim to be under their control without question. Despite the fact that nobody living in those places wants that. Um, and that's certainly the case for Taiwanese people. Uh, they don't really have any interest of being under Beijing's control. Um, and, you know, they don't share the same uh, values under communism. I mean, listen, communism as difficult it is to say this because I am not at all in, in favor I'm not I'm not at all uh, you know a supporter of the CCP or mainland Chinese interests um, it has helped the people in China in some way um, but you can't really say it like that because that doesn't that's not really fair right you could say that Mao helped the country um, however he is also responsible for the deaths of hundreds of millions of people so where, how are you gonna weigh that out on the scales 
which just doesn't seem like something that Chinese people are able to do. I mean, if you talk to Chinese people, they'll, they'll fully admit that uh, Mao Zedong made a lot of mistakes, that he did force the country into, you know, large-scale poverty. Lots of people died from starvation, from torture, from, I mean, you name it, from all kinds of things, right? They'll fully openly admit that, but then they also say, but he did a lot of good for the country, and that's why we revere him. That's why people respect him so much. That's why his portrait is over, you know, every school, every government building, every office, despite the, what he did. Whereas Taiwanese people, on the other hand, are totally... Uh-oh. What are you making a video about? Hong Kong. A warning to Taiwan. Hong Kong? Yeah. Right, I'm listening to a bit of uh, Miley Cyrus. Uh, Jolene, Jolene. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's a good tune. Whereas Taiwanese people are absolutely able to balance out the scales and understand uh, their history's past. Like, for example, if you take what Chairman Mao's uh, opponent would be, which is Chiang Kai-shek, the, uh, you know, the first president of the, of the island of Taiwan, was an absolute dictator. I'm sorry it is a bit windy out here in Puli, um, but if you've ever read anything about the White Terror, I mean, you know, Taiwan didn't get democratic freedoms until like the, what, the 80s, the 90s, it was very recent. Um, so he was a dictator, so now people in Taiwan are really starting to open their eyes and I'm finding more and more now that when I talk to Taiwanese people, they do not have a very good opinion of Chiang Kai-shek. Um, and they're starting to see now that they don't have to forgive the founding fathers of their nations. Uh, you know, they can get past it and they can start to vote in people uh, which, uh, which serve their interests, which is a really powerful thing. It's not something that Chinese people are, are able to enjoy. But then again, that's why communism sort of works in mainland China is that you know, they aren't really people that typically care about politics in, in China because, one, they can't care, but, you know, even if they could, uh, it wouldn't matter. They're, it's not something that they're, they're very they're bothered with. They're, they're more concerned about having enough money and, and food for their families to eat and whoever runs the country, they really couldn't give a shit up until it really becomes bad and then they revolt and then, you know, they change a dynasty. You know, Taiwanese people don't really have to do that because if they get fed up with the government, then they just vote a new one in. They don't have to uh, revolt. They don't have to upheave the government or whatever. This is the big advantage of Taiwan. And it's such a special place. It's such a special place. It's standing strong against such a powerful enemy, which I think is really admirable. And Hong Kong falling is just the beginning. It's just a warning to Taiwan as to what's to come, because I'm telling you that is exactly what China is planning is to take over Taiwan and how they're going to do it. We don't know. Um, but it is, they are going to make an attempt, I'm sure. Um, you know, and China's very good, they're very tricky, and they're very good at, at, at achieving their national goals because they're able to pull all the resources in, into one thing. And I think it's very scary. I mean, especially now that, I mean, I think I have really developed a, a strong passion for Taiwan after doing this Wanda, after riding around on my scooter. I, I encourage everyone to do it because you really get to see all the little parts of Taiwan, the little nooks and crannies of life here. It's such a beautiful island amazing people, a really unique opportunity to live free, live out with democratic freedoms, which is something that I think a lot of people, especially in the West, take for granted because the threats of communism are, are so far away, but here it's, it's right outside their door. And yes, I understand. I know there are people that are going to be saying in the comment section that China isn't truly communist. I don't think communism is the reason that China enjoys the sex that it does, right? The fact that they've they've used capitalistic ideas and opened up the country to economic trade internationally is the reason that they're successful, not communism, right? But it's still a very sinister, um, a, a very sinister government that does not have the people's interests in their minds, right? And I think another interesting point to take home from this is that nobody on either side of this argument believes that they're wrong. If you talk to Chinese people, Taiwan is a part of China. They're not wrong. It's, it's without a doubt. And you talk to Taiwanese people and Taiwan is an independent country, without a, a doubt. Nobody believes they're wrong, right? I think that's a really interesting thing, I don't know, for me, because I have been, I've had been fortunate enough to live in both places, and I'm, I think I, 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 I simply can't back Chinese interests, Chinese mainland interests. It seems to me that the people here in Taiwan want to be left the hell alone. Anyways, I, it's a bit sad that I leave, you know, I finish my Huanda with those thoughts of a city that I love that has fallen and the looming threat that comes closer and closer to Taiwan. And I'm not fear-mongering. I'm not trying to be unrealistic. I'm not being 
overly uh, over the top with with the threat anyways on that rather sad note i wish taiwan the best of luck it has my support i hope it has yours too stay positive keep your stick on the ice and uh i'll catch you guys on the next video